It's my pleasure and my privilege to introduce our next speaker, one who came here to SoCap uh, as a mere babe, uh, about 23 or 24 years old and full of excitement and full of ideas and full of energy. And over the last eight or nine years has taken those ideas and energy and enthusiasm and built one of the most amazing entrepreneur networks in, in, the, in the country and probably even the world. Over that time, Ross has become a dear friend and he's become a father. So be sure when you see him out and about to show him the pictures of Jack and Jen, his wife and his adorable baby. But right now, he's going to come out and continue this powerful conversation about why is it that we're here and what it is we're going to do next. Please welcome from Village Capital, Ross Baird. Morning, everybody. I don't have any breakfast cereal for you. Um, and I can't match what uh, Jed just did, so I'm not even going to try. Um, what I do want to talk about, uh, how can we do better is the theme of the morning. And I wasn't at the first SOCAP, but I was at the second one. I've been at every one since. And I think if you talked to the group that was here in 2009 and you said, what is SOCAP 2017 going to be talking about um, devastating forest fires and entire islands that don't have electricity um, and inequality at an all-time high is probably not what people were hoping was going to happen eight years later. So there's an amazing amount of energy, and a lot is going right, and a lot in this room is going right. But, but in the big picture, I, think, I don't think things are going the right direction necessarily. Um, and I'd argue that we have everything we need. We have wonderful organizations, we have terrific people, but we do have, we do have blind spots. And these blind spots are maybe the things that if we fix, we can, we can do and create what we want to create. Um, I wrote a book called The Innovation Blind Spot that tells the story of what I do and where the blind spots are. That's actually not what I'm going to talk about today, though. If you wanted to uh, buy the book, I wouldn't hate it. Um, but that's, that's actually, I'm going to talk about the biggest thing I've learned as I, over the last year, have tried to figure out what some of my and our own blind spots would be. So how many of you have been to a McDonald's in the last week? All right, not, not a lot of McDonald's eaters here. Let's see one in the back. Um, we at Village Capital, we invest in companies across the country and across the world that are building a more sustainable society, whether it's agriculture, or energy, or water management, um, or are helping people gain access to financial services or education or help, things that can mitigate income inequality, give people social mobility. And we don't do a lot of work in places like San Francisco and New York. We do work in places like Paducah, Kentucky, uh, which is in southern Kentucky, where we've got an investment in a company called Fin Gourmet. And what Fin Gourmet does is they catch Asian carp which is a horribly invasive species if you're an environmentalist. Um, they chop it up, they rebrand it Kentucky Blue Snapper, um, sell it to high-end restaurants. You can get Kentucky Blue Snapper here in San Francisco. Um, and they, they've created dozens of living wage jobs in one of the poorest counties in the country. So great business, great impact, very creative. Um, if you go to Paducah, uh, what I do when I travel to places like Paducah is I'll typically have breakfast or have coffee at McDonald's. And McDonald's, for probably the bottom 50% of the income bracket, markets themselves as the place where the community comes together. So if you go to the Paducah McDonald's on a Monday morning from 7 to 9 and get a $1 unlimited refill cup of coffee, you'll probably meet 30 different people coming in and out. And they're not going to be like, who are you? Why are you here? Like, like people just sit around and talk. So... Basically, I started recognizing that we are here in San Francisco and we're trying to save the world, but there's a huge divide between the people in this room and the people that we are supposedly trying to innovate for, in most cases, and I don't want to overgeneralize. Um, and so I realized if we're trying to help people who don't have bank accounts, I have a bank account that works just fine. If we're trying to help people who don't have jobs, I have a job that I love. Um, 
maybe there are blind spots that we can close. So I, I set a goal about a year ago of saying every Monday, no matter where I am, whether it's San Francisco or Paducah, Kentucky, I'm gonna go and have breakfast at McDonald's. And it hasn't happened every Monday, but it's happened most Mondays. It's a game I've played with myself. I called it McDonald's Mondays. Um, not for any, <laughs> I don't know why, but I gave it a name. Um, and I was in Orange, Virginia one Monday, and I was talking to McDonald's right downtown. You've probably been there, Stephanie. Um, I was in McDonald's right downtown, and these people are like, what do you do? And I was like, I uh, invest in small businesses. And they're like, small businesses, that's really all we've got. Um, this is a shot from Main Street Orange, and they're like, you know, when these three businesses when the Lowe's opened 20 miles away, it shut down these three. When the Target opened 20 miles that way, it shut down these three. Like, we don't really have anything but small business. And so we start talking about what's going on in Orange. And so I talked to this guy, uh, and I'm like, all right, well, we invest $50,000 in companies. What would you do if you had $50,000? He's like, I would start a coffee shop. Because you know what? We sit here in this crappy McDonald's, and this chair's been broken for a year, and the people in New York don't care that the chair's broken, and I just like to sit in a comfortable chair and drink not crappy coffee. And there's something really, really very beautiful about that. I think that a lot of the conversation and a lot of the blind spots we have are around scale as optimization. Wall Street wants it, Silicon Valley wants it. A lot of the conversation is how do we get to scale? But when we, when we obsess over scale, what it means is Lowe's makes a ton of money and Target makes a ton of money and Main Street Orange is completely wiped out. And like, what are we left with? We're left with people who want 50 grand to start coffee shops. Um, corporate consolidation, mergers and acquisitions, the exits that everyone at this conference really wants have on average cost the average family $14,000 a year. That's more than automation, that's more than offshoring, that's more than all the things you see in the newspaper. So maybe we're thinking differently, uh, or maybe one of our biggest blind spots is thinking about this mythical unicorn of scale. Maybe what we need to do to prevent forest fires and to address climate is actually much smaller and much more in our backyard. So this is, uh, thank you. This is my baby Jack. Um, I don't know, he's three months old and I just like pictures of him, so. Um, but I think what, when Jack, what Jack wants to be when he grows up, I don't know what he'll wanna be, but when I was a kid, I wanted to be an inventor. Um, Thomas Edison was a hero of mine, et cetera, and working with entrepreneurs, I get to do more or less that. Um, I'm sure that Jack doesn't want to, when he's eight, he's not gonna say, hey, I wanna make a ton of money on Wall Street and completely hollow out towns across America. That sounds really great. Um, but sometime between, so think of like what you wanted to be when you were a kid. And sometime between that and where we are now, a lot of people had different things change. And so that, I think, is the biggest blind spot of all. We're obsessed with scale, we're obsessed with goals, we don't understand the collateral damage between here and then. So if I wanna say one thing I've learned from going to McDonald's every Monday, every place I go, there's somebody who wants to start a coffee shop and needs $50,000, or someone who's you know, a stressed out teacher who, you know, I teach at University of Virginia, and they say, oh, you teach at UVA, like, what do you do that I can learn from? Like, everybody's looking to do what they can with what they have, with where they are. And so, so much of the goals of the capital markets are completely inaccessible to where you are right now. And I'd say don't go for that. Figure out what do you have in your power to do today. The way you figure out what you can do and what you can do better is by asking other people. One of the most transformative things about going to McDonald's every Monday is nobody at McDonald's Mondays yet has ever heard of the social capital markets or ever heard of entrepreneurship. Or when I say the word startup, I was in Austin, Texas for South by Southwest. No one at McDonald's had heard that South by Southwest was even happening. 100,000 people coming to Austin. McDonald's two miles away, they're like, why are all the traffic people? Oh, that's a weird conference, good for you. Um, asking people, how am I doing? What am I doing? What could I be doing better? And asking people whether it's in McDonald's or the person sitting next to you, that's how you eliminate your blind spots. The amazing thing about blind spots is you can't see them yourself. But the great thing about SOCAP is you are surrounded by people who, unlike 51 weeks a year, understand what you do. How many of you can explain to your families what you do for a living? 
certainly not me. Um, but people here get what you do. People here are not competitive with you. People here are rooting for you. So if you say, here's what I'm doing, what am I missing? If you are a funder or an investor, pretty much every day, there's a power dynamic where people who don't have money will tell you what you want to hear because they want your money. And you probably feel that. I, working for an investment firm, that's part of the deal. If you say, listen, just let's take a step back. Here's what we're doing at our foundation or here's what we're doing with our investment firm. What are we missing? What feedback do we have? You might be able to see blind spots, things you don't understand. Um, and you can do this whether you run an investment firm or whether you're a volunteer at SOCAP. One of the things, I wrote this book, The Innovation Blind Spot, that again, you should buy, it's really wonderful. Um, I've done about 20 conversations over the last month and it's been amazing, but you can write a book, but also Ben Robel on my team spent hours editing the book and making it great. Dustin on my team organizes events and makes sure they run on time. Rachel on my team got the sweater that I left at one event and brought it there. Ha raise your hand if you're a SOCAP volunteer. Big round of applause for the SOCAP volunteers. You guys are making the change in the capital markets happen as much as me or Jed Emerson or whoever speaking, picking, speaking up on stage. So I'm out of time, but the main thing I would say is we've got blind spots and they're very easy to solve. One, what can I do with what I have? Two, turn to the person next to you, whether it's here at McDonald's, say, here's what I'm doing, what am I missing? What can I do better? So you can't stop forest fires. I wish you could, but you can do better with what you have. And that's what I've learned over the last year. Thanks very much.